All right, everybody. Um, so as an addendum to our conversation on Thursday, a lecture on how to use so MATLAB to solve ordinary differential equations, or ODEs, um, I wanted to give a MATLAB video on this as well. Um, importantly, we're covering this in many different ways. You can think about the lecture I gave on Thursday. You can go to the book and the book's approach to solving this and understanding this. Uh, my notes that are going to be posted or are already posted online. And in this video, I want to give a different example, hopefully to help you see the different various ways these all intertwine and interact. Uh, that's the, the key mechanism to understanding uh, this. Now, first and foremost, like I said, you can break down MATLAB's approach to solving ordinary differential equations into two main parts. One is creating the function file that describes the ordinary equations that you're trying to solve, and two, the MATLAB function that you're going to use to solve that uh, equation. So for the function, the function is always going to take the kind of this kind of form. You're going to have a t or um, uh, the time element of this derivative, the dt portion, uh, and then the variable that is uh, the dependent variable in these functions compared to time. And so in this case, let's uh, we can cluster these as, as call them the variable outputs, whatever we want to call it. I'm just calling it variable just so you can uh, see that. Is equal to uh, ODE45 is one example. It could be ODE23, ODE15, or, or 113. There's a bunch of them. Uh, they all have, I think, as I mentioned, uh, pluses and minuses as to what they do. Uh, 45 is usually a good first one to try. Uh, but in this, you're going to create at and then the name of your function. And then you're going to have a variable uh, or not a vector that's going to be the span of the uh, time domain that you're going to use. Uh, normally you can just write a beginning and end variable or you can force the interval you want t to be. But in this case, you can say 0, um, you know, in the beginning and end of the time domain that you're iterating through. And then you have to have your initial conditions. Initial conditions. And as a um, input. Now this initial conditions will be another vector that will be the same size as the number of uh, uh, variables, or dependent variables in this case, that you'll have uh, in this uh, function. And then finally, you'll have in here options that you can vary and change uh, that you can plug in. But for the most part, uh, for our purposes in this class, you can ignore those. You can just end it there, and that'll uh, be the function that, or the the function that you use to solve the ordinary differential equation. But now, the other part of this magic is how are we going to define or write this name function? And I find this one this to be the biggest confusing part of 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 the equation, and that's why I wanted to do this in in Word first because I'm going to hopefully do this through. Uh, creating a uh, uh, equation uh, through Word so you can see how we break this down and how this is going to look like. Uh, but briefly, what you're going to do is you're going to create a function that is going to equal to um, let's see, uh, some valid name, whatever you want to call the function, uh, t comma the variables, right? You'll notice here, this uh, takes the same form notation, your independent variable time, in this case, because that's the independent variable and all these are taken to, and the variable, the dependent variables that you have in here are there. Now, importantly, what you'll notice is I'm saying this is a single vector variable, and this is a single vector variable. They are not separate variables, you combine all of these into one. In other words, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating, if I was to write this out in math notation, so let me go to insert, um, not symbol, where's my equation? Here you go. Let's uh, insert an equation. If I was going to answer this, and I'm going to answer this as a matrix, we're actually going to be entering in this f Oops. That's going to be a bracket bracket. This f as your um, uh, dx d 
dt in the first position, dy dt in the second position, and dz dt in the third position. And that whole thing is going to equal to your name of t comma, and then again, this vector, oops, insert, oh, in the design, go to matrix, go to three, and this is going to be again, uh, your x, y, and z. Okay? I'm sorry, I'm bouncing this around. It's, it's I keep on making this a little hard for me, but there you go. So that's going to be the notation. Now note, if this is directly analogous to what we've written up above, right? That this f format is there. This first vector is simply your the first position, this value here, this value here, and this value here. So if I was to rewrite this one more time, just to be a little bit redundant, and we, and we redefine these as our, um, uh, if we redefine this as our index notation in MATLAB, ah, Okay, well, let's undo all that. That looks weird. Okay. Um, this is actually the same thing as saying F1, because it's the first index position. This is the same thing as saying F2. And this is the same thing as saying F3. And then over here, in this notation, in this side, According to the variable name that we have here, this is just going to be variable 1, because it's the first index position. This is variable 2, and this is variable 3. Now note, I'm, I'm again, out of convenience just writing it this way, um, but it's just a single name in, in this part. This is actually how we would call it, but this is what we're going to be doing um, explicitly within the function. Uh, so. That is the format that we're going to take. So how do we force it into that format? Well, all we have to do is go in, and I'm going to delete these just so we can bring this on board a little bit so you can see that easier, and I will bring that up. There you go. Is in the function that we create, we're going to write it this way. We'll say function of... And in this case, we'll just call it f, because that's what we're calling it above, is equal to, because that's the output. And we'll call this function um, ddt, or let's, uh, let's just call this um, uh, silly man. So the function silly man is going to be, um, going to have the inputs of t, comma, and I'll just call it var. And so now in this function, we're going to go ahead and start creating our vector. Now, the one thing I want to make sure of as we're creating this is just force the vector to be in this one, two, three format, in a, in a column vector format. So we can do that by saying zero, zero, zero. We're just creating a dummy set of values so that MATLAB knows F is a column vector, not a row vector. And then we're going to go ahead and then say F1 which is the first position, dx dt, and over here it says it's equal to x. x is variable 1, or var 1, times t. And you'll notice t is here. And so that's, that's, that's cool. So we can actually have that there. And then we can say f2 is equal to, and now f2 as it says here is y2, dy dt. dy dt is equal to 10 times x. So it's 10 times x, which is var variable var1. So we have var1 times 10. And then f3 is equal to dz dt, which is equal to var2, because variable 2 is equal to y, times, or squared, 
minus 20 times z, which is var 3. End. And that is it. Now you'll notice a couple of things. One, I didn't bother putting dots in here. We're not doing array math because these calls are ensuring that we have single value scalar uh, notation. So it's not really needed to do that. So I'm going to copy and paste this over into MATLAB now. Let's create a new script and put this in. We have a function called silly man. We have all these spaces. We've got this still looking good. So I think we're in good shape here. Um, and so good. So let's say save. It's making us have silly man. Good, good. So there you go. So now we'll have to define a range. So I'm going to say t-span is equal to, and we'll keep it short. Let's go 0 to 3. And we need to specify a uh, conditions, our initial conditions. Initial. So let's just call them var not. Now, no, in the, in the initial conditions, it also has to be a vector, and each vector is going to relate to the position on the order, so it's x, y, and z, 1, 2, 3, and those positions uh, we'll just say is um, 0.1, 0, and 0. Let's try that. And there you go. And so we have our initial conditions, we have our t-span, so we can do our solution. t, comma, y, as our output, or we'll just say var, I'm used to saying t comma y, but we'll say variable is equal to ODE45. And we can say um, at silly man, comma, t span, comma, var not. There you go. Good, it worked. And so let's see what we got plot. If we plot t comma var, what do we see? Oh, cool. Look at this. We see a bunch of things growing. Um, well, what does that mean? So if we were to go further, go up to our T-span and go to 10, is this going to come to steady state? T var, plot it. Let's look at our figure now. And we're at 10 to the 39th. I'm certain you can see by now that this um, uh, equation isn't going to come to steady state, and I'm pretty certain if you're paying attention, you can kind of tell why. However, let's go back and fix it. If we look at var t squared t var 1, none of these are actually seeming to converge to anything. This one especially is going to be blowing up. If we, however, turn this to a negative, uh, this negative should become a negative exp uh, exponential and should uh, behave more consistently. So let's change this up. Let's t var have a redo our ODE with the new um, change in the math. All we did was added a negative symbol to this equation. This is now a new set of ODEs. I'm just artificially changing it for the sake of demonstrating um, uh, uh, what this is going to look like now. Plot t var go to our plots and sure enough you can see uh, they all calm down to some steady state value and you could actually calculate that analytically and, and solve for them and see if that is the case. Yes, those are the answers. Um, and so that is all there is to ordinary differential equations in MATLAB. The biggest trick and the biggest thing to, uh, hurdle is to know how to turn these into, uh, into this and the steps in between that make that happen are first and foremost recognizing one that this is the format you're forcing into the function is your f is the d uh, the derivatives on the left hand side and the variables are the sum of all of the dependent variables of the ODEs if it's x y and z and so forth once you understand that then you can transform this vector into f1 f2 f3 notation into index notation the variables into index notation and then the function follows suit very cleanly. Uh, so hopefully this makes a lot of sense. Uh, if not, uh, I encourage you to practice this. Go through all the notes and, and work them through uh, independently. Make sure you understand that. And beyond that, um, I will see you on Tuesday.
Have a good uh, rest of the uh, weekend.